I always say the only good thing about jazz is that it scores very highly in Scrabble. <laughs> you don't fancy making this a bit more interesting, do you? Lotter, a wager. M what? Most chicks. An indentured Russian peasant. I knew I'd heard it before. You hustled him. Didn't hustle him. I smashed him. We're here at Film.ca Theatres. We're interviewing director Carl James Hunter of Sometimes, Always, Never. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, it's really wonderful to have you here for our festival, the sixth year. And uh, let's chat about that. this film. It's a story about life, about love, about grief, about hope. Mm. Um, so many wonderful metaphors and parallels that you see in the film. Um, what, was, what was the biggest takeaway for you? Uh, wrapping up the, the film? Um, finishing a film is, well, it's always a relief um, to know that it's all kind of worked and, and it's glued together. So I suppose relief in a way is a, something you kind of feel. Um, but then it disappears for a while, the film, because it's edited and it's finished and it exists in a file somewhere. And then it disappears for ages and nothing happens. And then all of a sudden, things start to happen with the film, film festivals start to screen it, it ends up getting a general release um, in different countries or in Britain or whatever. So all of a sudden it has another life. So you spend 10 months making a film and then there's a period where you think what happened to that film I made and then all of a sudden you're in Toronto, or in Oakville in my case, uh, talking about the film yeah. to a sold out theatre. Um, so yeah, it's kind of strange. So there's so many themes in the film and uh, one of the stories was about the prodigal son mm. and you know there's the son that went missing, the father is consumed by that, almost forgetting that there's another son that's still there and you know you feel sorry for him but he's going through his own grief as well, mm. dealing with the loss of his brother um, but he's trying to pick himself up and mm. be, the, be the son that his father wants I yeah. guess. Um, now there was a scene when they were talking about Marmite and Vegemite and Vegemite as yeah. a poor substitute. Um, it made me think that, is that what Bill thought about his son? Was he just a poor substitute for the, the son that went missing? Was that a theme that was talked about in the, in the film? Uh, well, there was a, there's a theme in the film uh, which is about second best and about substitutes, board games. And at one point, Bill refers to himself as being a kind of substitute mother, because there's no mother in the story. So I think when Bill's comment, post Marmite rant, um, is really referring to the fact that, um, you know, that there is no mother. And you know, Bill's saying, look at me, I'm a dad. I've brought you up well. You know, but sometimes, you know, a poor substitute is all there is. Um, but the rant about Marmite's really funny, because um, you uh, can't bring Marmite into Canada. I, I feel like I've seen Marmite and not Vegemite, but yeah. I could, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm mistaken. I'm not a huge fan. I like I like jam and marmalade, but I haven't got on that train yet. <laughs> no, I'm not, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not a big Marmite fan. Not a big but, fan. Um, but I, I equally haven't tried to smuggle it into Canada, so I haven't broken any Should have brought some with you. <laughs> and break a law. Break a law, right? I don't want to go to a Canadian jail. <laughs> it's probably not that bad. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Um, now, there is uh, the, wait the waitress in one of the diners, mm. and she just kept repeating the word soap. Yeah. Soap. Um, I love that, and just how <laughs> there was, you know, sometimes you forget to look at the small pleasures in life, yeah. and more so than just being a story about grief and, mm. and sadness, but there was the hope, mm. and it was just putting life in perspective, and appreciating a beautiful sunny day or appreciating a really cute word like soap yeah. and enjoying a, a family board game. Um, what are some simple pleasures that uh, that carry you on throughout your life? Um, I, I run a lot um, run. and I swim. So there are two things I do. They're my kind of, they're my vices, swimming <laughs> and running. Not uh, bad vices. <laughs> no, I like to run actually. I find Good. running quite meditative so um, and it's, it's, running's good because it's a time where it's just you um, and no one can phone you and you can't phone anyone um, and it's kind of, you know, and after when you run for a certain distance, your body does change chemically. Yes, um, you get a runner's high. That's right, yeah, 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 yeah. which is the equivalent to a, a, a marmite high. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would imagine. Um, so no, simple, you know, simple pleasures for me would be um, would be running, walking. I do a lot of walking, so I love being. I live, live near a coast. Um, in fact, where, where I live in Liverpool, I'm about 15 minutes walk uh, to a coast where there's a beach which stretches about 18 miles. And I walk, I, I have to walk that. And I quite like that, you know, I like, you know, I like, I like to see the birds and I like flowers, I like nature, I like the sea. Nice. So, I mean, it's a simple pleasure, but it's, um, but I like it a lot. And, and that scene you're referring to, originally, the waitress was very young um, and she was a little bit flirtatious. Um, but I kind of changed that when we shot it because up until that point in the film, poor old Sam Riley, Everyone's quite horrible to him, um, and I I remember reading that thinking it's kind of I want to hug him. I feel really sorry for him. <laughs> so in that scene, instead of having a young flirtatious uh, waitress, um, I swapped it for a much older woman because I wanted his mother to yes, be there. Yes, that nurturer. Okay. Yeah. And I think that was the one moment in the film where you know poor old Sam's mum has died many, many years earlier. We never see her, or even hear about her, really. Um, but I think that was the one moment in his life where the one person he needed was his mother. And that's why the waitress would cast a much older woman, because it was the, the security and that thing of saying to your son, look, I know you're a mess, and I know you're upset, but it'll be OK. And when your mum says to you, it will be OK. be OK. It will be OK. So that, that's why that scene was changed for um, yeah, simple pleasures, walking, swimming, and running. Nice. So an, another theme that uh, was kind of discussed, uh, you know, we see this single father, mm. lost his wife, now loses his son. Mm. Um, you know, there was maybe some themes about masculinity, about mm. fatherhood, and the role a single father plays, and even a single mother. Yeah. You know, if you're a single mom, you might feel there's a lacking in, in the, the fatherhood department, but you try yeah. to make up for it. And yeah. as a single dad, you try to make up for it with other nurturing ways. Mm. And I mean, you can see that his son maybe had some resentment that he didn't get all that. Um, mm. I think the fatherhood part was was a really interesting concept to see, and and the struggle it is to yeah, raise yeah. to raise children and yeah. losing one, and that's probably the worst thing that could happen to a person. Is yeah, like losing it's a, nothing worse. Yeah. No. So last night you discussed that you made three promises to your actors: no close-ups. Yeah. Uh, no opening and closing a door. Yeah. And what was the third one? Uh, no improvisation. No improvisation. Yeah. Now, the closing the door and opening the door. I, yeah. What What was your reasoning for that? Um, the reason for the the the, uh, the banning of opening and closing doors is I've never understood why anyone shoots it. <laughs> um, we all know that if you're outside your house and then you're inside your house, then the chances are you've gone through a door. Um, so I think it's to do with grammar, a visual grammar. Um, and television, uh, soap operas, they have a very different visual grammar to say certain types of you know, cinema. Um, and it's a grammar that really irritates me. It's like, I know someone gets into a car, unless they're a ghost yeah. or they have superpowers, they must have opened the door. And the same when a ca car starts. Um, when you see someone put keys in the ignition and start a car, I always think, but that's how you start a car. It's like, who doesn't know that? Why do you need to, of course it is. It's almost it filling start. it with fluff that's not needed, right? Yeah, I always get, I always think it's unnecessary. So yeah. with this film, I just thought I'm gonna just ban it, just not bother shooting it. That's yeah. interesting that you yeah. made that, that a hard rule, but it, it makes so much sense. And mm. it, you said that the first edit was like three hours long. Yeah, it was, yeah. So yeah. you were trying to just cut out yeah. just the real stuff, that the essence of the film that needed to be shown. You didn't need the doors, you don't need that, that yeah. fluffy stuff. So, I mean, it, you, you really captured an incredible story. Um, it, was, it was a joy to watch and funny, really funny. I'm glad to hear that. And you know what? Watching you and Tim together, like you two should do something together. You are so funny. On <laughs> off screen it was great um, now I know that you an expression you guys use over the pond is taking the piss out of someone right oh, yes, did you guys yes, do yes, that yeah. a lot on set um, a lot of pranking joking around <laughs> yeah we did yeah we did joke quite a lot actually um, 
Yeah, we did joke quite a lot. But again, often you're joking on set is because when you're filming, it's so intense. Yes. And we were filming in winter in the studio and it was it was bitterly cold. Um, you know, and crew uh, work long days, um, the cast work long days. You know, it's cold, it's dark. And with the best will in the world, if you want everyone to be happy 24 hours a day, every day, you know, it's a big ask. So often on set, jokes are good or, you know, messing around. Yeah. It's because it's a way of saying to someone, you know, I appreciate you. You know, it's good fun working with you. You know, it's all right, we'll have a laugh. So often it's really about kind of, it's also a confidence thing. I think when you're, if you're in an environment where you're allowed to play, then you'll always be more creative. If you're in an environment where you kind of, where people really kind of crush you, so you're frightened to have an opinion, that really stifles creativity. Mm -hmm. And personally, I'd sooner be in a world and an environment where people have the freedom to be creative. Because if they're creative, then I feel creative. And then the film's better as a result of it. It's so, chemical, it's contagious, right? It is, yeah, and I think you should, when you, when you shoot a film, I think it's important to realise that it's not about me. It's about the 65 people who are on set at that time, um, and, and also how they feel, and you know what do they, you know, what do they think? You know, what, you know so make make the day as pleasant as you can. I mean, who wants to go to work to a miserable environment? Right. I certainly wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. So if I'm directing a film, I'll create the environment where people could come to work and feel like, oh, it's a good day. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't. I would. I take to think that any of the days when we were filming that I'd created environments where, where it kind of upset people or it made them feel like, oh, they don't want to, they couldn't comment because they get ridiculed. Yeah. So I, I do try and remove that world, if I can. Yeah. yeah. But that's certainly something I will do. Well, I think they were pretty lucky to have you as the director on this film. Um, it looked like a wonderful experience and it's just a wonderful film if you, you know, putting life in perspective, sometimes you're down, but you know, keep that hope. And Bill Nye, he said, hope is a great friend. Yeah. And I think that so simple, but so true. And keeping hope, keeping faith that there are dark days, but there are good days and keep hope that, that they'll be back. Um, so if you haven't already seen the film, please watch the film, uh, Sometimes Always Never. Uh, director Carl Hunter, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting the festival, and it was great chatting with you. Well, thank you for the invite. I've had a great time, and I just hope uh, my mom might smuggle in. Yeah. <laughs> Won't come back to haunt me. Yeah. Get him deported. All right, <laughs> well, thank you so much, and uh, well, please go see the film. <laughs> thank you.